Okay. Here we go. <clears throat> and we're off. The subject of the video this evening is bearings and angles. We're at the point in the course now where you're learning about bearings and angles, but we talked the other night about how they relate. So I'm going to give you some examples right now of how they work and how to manipulate them, how to do the calculations. It's very simple in concept. You just have to take a little while to think about it, like a lot of the things that we do. Take a little while to think about it. The first thing you got to remember is that in surveying, we measure angles, but when we draw maps, the angles don't really mean anything if they can swing around anywhere on the compass, so to speak. So we use angles to relate directions. And we can describe directions traditionally as either bearings or azimuths. Generally speaking, we are going to use bearings in this class because bearings are the traditional way that we refer to directions in surveying. The question is, how are bearings described? Bearings are described in terms of quadrants. You have four quadrants. You have northeast. Draw up here. Let's draw us a little cross up here. We have four quadrants. We have the northeast quadrant, southeast, southwest, and northwest. Northwest quadrant. That's as simple as that. The question is, how do the numbers come into play? The numbers come into play because bearings are related in terms of the quadrant that they go into as well as the angle between the line in question in either the north meridian or the south meridian depending on which quadrant you're in. In this case, I'm a little bit crooked there, sorry about that. Uh, in this case, we'll use an example. We'll, use, we'll go with the northeast quadrant. And suppose we had a line that started here in the middle, and went up this way, like so. And if this angle here was, for example, let's say uh, 38 degrees. 38 degrees, then this line right here that we just drew in would have a bearing Of north 38 degrees east. North 38 degrees east. Very straightforward. The important thing is when you're doing this until you're really really well versed in it you've got to avoid the temptation that so many people have to once they get close to the east or to the west line, all of a sudden, for some reason, psychologically, they want to relate that angle to the east or the west line rather than the north or south. And that's not really the way it's done. I've actually seen it done that way on some deeds uh, over the years, but it's not really the right way to do it. You're supposed to relate it to north or south. But we have our bearing of north 38 degrees east. Now, the really cool thing about bearings that I happen to like about bearings as opposed to azimuths. And like we related the other night, azimuths are measured in 360 degrees starting at north, starting at north and going around this way. So this bearing of 38 degrees northeast would have an azimuth of 38 degrees, or a north azimuth of 38 degrees. But one of the cool things about bearings is that when you have bearings, you have the concept of a back bearing. Now, a back bearing is a line going in the opposite direction of any other line. In, in this case, for example, it's easier to show you and explain. This bearing is north 38 degrees east. The back bearing is going in the other direction, like so. Well, because this is a perpendicular lines, 
and this is a straight line. This angle here, drawn in in blue to make it look a little bit different, is also 38 degrees. And the bearing of this line would be south 38 degrees west. You notice one thing, we didn't have to do any math. That's the thing I like about it. I love math, it's very useful, but it's a whole lot easier and less prone to errors if you don't even have to do it. If you just, all you gotta do is reverse the quadrant. If this is in the northeast quadrant, the back bearing is in the southwest quadrant. And, you know, it doesn't have to be in the quadrant. It could be up here too. It does, as long as you're going in this direction, you're going south 38 west. If you're going in this direction, you're going north 38 east. And that's the concept of the back bearing. Now, getting back to what I said at the beginning of the video, how do these bearings relate to angles? Well, let me erase this right quick, and uh, we'll give another example of how the two relate. My eraser's not working too well here. We got serious residue on the board, but we'll make the best of it. We will make the best of it. I got my fancy eraser, but it's not doing so good. But that's good enough for now. Now, how does this whole bearing concept relate to angles? Once again, we're going to draw us a little cross up here, just like so, north being straight up. I'll try to make it a little closer to perpendicular. Oh, well, it's not bad. Not bad at all for freehanding. You know, what the heck? There's north, and we got our cross. Whenever you're going to work with bearings, you got to draw that little cross. This all relates back to something I've always maintained in teaching these classes. And that is, if you draw a good picture, you get a good answer. Well, you can only draw it so good, but that's pretty good. Good enough for what it's for. Now, how do bearings and angles relate? Well, let's give an example. We're going to draw a line right here. And let's say the bearing of this line is north 48 degrees east. Now, in our hypothetical situation here, we set our survey instrument up right here in the middle. There's your tripod looking down at it. It's an ugly tripod, but there it is nonetheless. It's got four legs. It's an interesting tripod with four legs. Nonetheless, you set your instrument up and you measure an angle this way. And that angle is 105 degrees. The question is, you measured 105 degrees. What is the bearing of this line here? This is north 48 east going that way. And that's 105 degrees. Well, in order to solve that, we need to figure out what the angle is between the line in question and the south meridian. Well, that's this angle right in here. I'm going to draw it in in red, just to make it look a little bit different. Draw it in in red. How can we figure that out? Well, it's simple. From north to south, we know is 180 degrees, right? Straight line, got to be 180 degrees. This is north 48 degrees east, which makes this angle right here 48 degrees. Well, 48 degrees here, 105 degrees there, you add them together, well, what do you get? 153 degrees, right? 105 and 48, 153 degrees. So that means that this big angle from north all the way around to here, just like so, 
is 153 degrees. 153 degrees. Well, if it's 153 degrees from north to this line, and it's 180 degrees from north to south, then this angle has got to be 180 minus 153, which gives you 27 degrees, right? 153 and 27. 27 degrees, that means this angle right here is 27 degrees, which means the bearing of this line right here is south, 27 degrees east. And that's the way we do it. Now this one here is a good example. It's a fairly simple example because everything is on the one side. You basically just have 180 degrees to worry about. It gets a little more complicated when you're switching back and forth between quadrants and you got multiple angles involved. And we're going to work with that, or we're going to work on that rather. But this is the concept. This is how bearings work. It looks intimidating at first. It gets really intimidating when you're starting to deal with degrees, minutes, and seconds. Fortunately, right now, we're just doing it in whole numbers, and you can do the math in your head relatively quick. But no matter what the numbers are, the concept's the same. And that's the important thing, you understand the concept. The other thing is, especially when you're first starting out, you need to be able to draw the picture with that cross north, south, east, west and work with it that way and make an effort to draw it as accurately as you possibly can. Now I don't have a protractor here. I don't know if that's exactly 48 degrees but I know that if I drew it up in here well, I know that's not 48 degrees. It, like I said earlier, it doesn't have to be the scale but just make it as neat and clear as you can because remember if you draw a good picture you get a good answer now we're going to move on and i'm going to give you another example we're going to bring some other quadrants into play and uh, we'll work out a little bit more complex of an example okay give me a minute to erase and we'll get started on the next one It's actually racing better the second time than it did the first. Maybe the, the, the whiteboard is getting broken in or something. I don't know. I'm no expert on whiteboards. I sure do use them though. Okay, we're going to give another example. Try to make it as real world as possible of angles and bearings. So here we go again. We're going to draw us across up in here. That's north. Come straight across here like so. And that's pretty good. We got north, south, east, and west. North, south, east, and west. Four points on the compass right there. Now, for our example here, we're going to do it a little bit different. We're going to work backwards. The first example we had, we had a couple of we had an angle and a couple of bearings. Or a, a, a bearing at a couple of angles and we figured out another bearing. Here we're going to have two bearings and we're going to figure the angle between them. Now a perfect example of this is if you have a deed or a map that has bearings for intersecting lines, there's very often going to be the situation where you have to compute the angle between those lines. You're out in the field surveying, you find three corners on a piece of property, and when we find corners in the field, the first thing you need to do, maybe not the first thing, but one thing you need to do is compare the measurements that you make with 
the measurements that are on the recorded document, whether it's a map or a deed. And one of the ways you need to be able to do that is by converting the bearings to angles. So here we go. Here's our deed. Our deed shows a bearing of this line going here. This bearing is south 52 degrees 15 minutes east. Coming in this way, right? Or like you see on a map, usually on a map you have an arrow on the on the bearing so you know which direction it's going in. Now, the line goes off in the other direction and it has a bearing. It has a bearing of north. Oh, I don't know, what is that? 29 degrees. 30 minutes east. Going that way. What we need to figure out is what's the angle between these, right? Well, we know that if this is south 52 degrees 15 minutes east, going that way, it would be northwest with the same numbers if you had the back bearing. But the important thing is that we know because of this number that this angle here is 52 degrees 15 minutes right there. Now, this angle here, 29 degrees, 30 minutes, right? 29 degrees, 30 minutes. 29 degrees, 30 minutes. Well, doesn't take much intelligence to figure out that all you have to do is add them up and that'll give you the angle between these two blue lines, won't it? So, this big angle here going from one line to the other is 52.15 plus 29.30, 52 degrees, 15 minutes, 29 degrees, 30 minutes, add them up, that's 45 minutes, excuse my penmanship there, 52 and 29 is 81, so this angle right here from one blue line to the other blue line is 81 degrees, 45 minutes. There is another example of how we apply bearings and angles and how they relate to one another. We'll do one other example uh, just to help you get familiar with it. Let me erase this one and we'll move on to another one. Now we're going to do a couple of more bearings in a different quadrant or different quadrants just to mix it up a little. Uh, the more examples you see, the more comfortable you'll be with it. But the important thing is to remember to just don't be intimidated by it. Just look at it and think. It gets back to what I've talked about before in class or what have you. The, the idea of not being intimidated by a problem. Just look at it and Maybe you can't get from point A to point F, but you don't have to worry about getting from point A to point F. Worry about getting to point B, and then when you get to point B, get to point C, and if you just keep going from point to point to point, just like surveying a traverse, sooner or later you're gonna wind up where you need to be. Just don't give up, don't get intimidated. You can do this, believe me. <laughs>